When I was 15, I worked uh, down in Pittsburgh, Kansas for my girlfriend, father, in a fireworks stand. And then when I turned 16, the following summer, he decided he wanted to sell the, the business. I bought the stand and enough fireworks to open up for 300 bucks. So my brother and I worked that eight day season and made 250 bucks a piece, which was more than, we, more than we made mowing grass all summer. So we thought, well, this is a heck of a deal. Our first tent in Kansas City was a little 20 by 40 at what's now 119th and Metcalf. Business just took off. Within three or four years, we had leased all of the tent spaces out in that area. So then we decided that we needed a warehouse. So we built a 4,000 square foot warehouse out in Stanley, Kansas. So it was my brother John and I who started the business out of the sand, and then my partner Rick Winders, who is the Win of Winco. Everybody thinks it stands for winning companies, but it's actually Winders and Collar. Expanded the warehouse, got more and more locations, and we started coming up with different products that were far better than any of the competition, quite frankly. At one of the fireworks conventions in Hawaii, Mr. Fung, H.C. Fung, about 85 at the time, second generation owner of Lee and Fung, who owned the Black Cat label. He came to me, because we also had the manufacturing plant down in Clinton, Zenith. He came to me and said, we want somebody to manufacture <clears throat> American-made product with the Black Cat label. Back then there were about six or seven manufacturers in America. And he goes, we picked you. So I said, okay. We had to pay them a small royalty and any components that we manufactured had to come from them through China. So we agreed to all that. They had started in the fireworks business a hundred years ago. So Mr. Fung came to me and said, we need a newborn business. And I said, okay, well, you need to make me a distributor. He said, well, I can't do that. You know, the six largest fireworks dealers in America are distributors, and they're barely making their quota, which was 20,000 cases. And I said, well, with all due respect, Mr. Fung, that's because you have a bad system. And so I explained to him, I said, you know, the thing is, is that, of course, nobody's gonna give up being able to carry the Black Cat brand. It's the brand in America. But they also, all these guys have their own private brand. So anytime they have a, an idea, they put it in their brand because they don't want to make their competition any stronger than they have to. He got ill. And so one of his Harvard graduate sons took over. And so I explained to him, well, so he got it. He said, uh, so if we make you a distributor, will you buy 20,000 cases? And I go, well, yeah. Well, the year before I had bought 3,500 from one of the other distributors. So I came back and one of my biggest wholesale customers was a street smart cattle buyer. And I explained to him, I said, well, I got the black hat deal. He says, great. I said, if you'll really support it, I'll pass on the savings to you. And he says, okay. I said, but we have one problem. If we really promote it in all of our locations, maybe we'll sell 10,000 cases. So that means next year, in order to keep the deal, we'll have to buy 30,000 cases. And he says something to me I'll never forget. He goes, well, if you tell him no now, there's nothing to lose. So basically, my, my strategy in almost all business after that was, what's the worst that can happen? What's the best that can happen? Is the risk of the worst worth the benefit of the best? And can I handle the worst? And if, I answer those questions all positive, then uh, we would do the deal. So, 1st of June, my phone starts ringing off the wall from all these other retailers saying, we hear you have black cat. I go, yeah. Well, everybody else is out. They would run out on purpose. So when somebody came in and said, we want some black cat, they'd go, we don't have black cat, but we have this other premium brand. So they would sell their own brand. So we sold out all 20,000 cases. I get on a plane, fly to China. Mr. Fung had gotten better at that point in time. So he and his Harvard graduate son, son and about five other people on his staff were all sitting in this room. 
And so I walked in and they go, did you sell the 20,000 cases? And I go, yeah. And they go, sure, we're going to buy 20,000 cases next year. And I go, no. And they looked at me like, okay, this guy's just a flash in the pan. I said, I'm going to buy 40,000 cases. Uh, but here's the deal. I have some an idea, ideas for some private label product. I'll give those ideas to you, and we'll make a black hat instead of other private brand, and you can't sell them to the other distributors. So he agreed. I went back to China the third year and uh, sold all the 40,000 cases. Uh, and they go, okay, so what, what do you got for us this year? And I go, I'm, <clears throat> I'm gonna sell 100,000 cases. And I said, well, here's the deal. The minute I reach 100,000 cases, you give me a 5% rebate. It was almost like, okay, it's, it's like a lark. So if, if he can do it, sure, we'll give you the 5,000 cases. Well, so what I did was, I, I didn't pocket that 5%. I gave it, I just reduced all my prices by 5%. So the smaller guys, the other, com other guys could compete. But on containers, 5% was a huge part of the total margin. So they couldn't compete. So I ended up getting all the Black Hat container business. You know, I was known as Mr. Black Hat and Mr. Mortar Guy. So they said, we can see where this is going. You know, you're gonna end up being the exclusive distributors, which we're fine with that. There's only one thing keeping you from just blowing this whole thing uh, sky high. Uh, you don't have enough credit line. You know, you're competing with second, third generation fireworks companies. You start out in this little stand, you don't have the credit line. And quite frankly, the American banks don't really understand uh, import business. So we want to buy 25% of your company. We're not going to give you the money to spend. We're going to take that as an equity investment. And that's going to make your equity look way, way better. And then we'll take you by the hand to Hong Kong Shanghai Bank and triple your credit line overnight. So I talked to my brother. I, you know, we had been in the business for 25 years by then. Do we want to give up 25% of the, this company that we started as kids? kind of as a lark uh, to these, this other company. And we talked about it and I said, well, here's the thing. Really the question is, is 75% of the snowball gonna be worth more than 100% of the full the snowball with their help in another five years? So the answer, of course, was yes. So we did the deal. We just kept growing and growing, buying a few companies. Normally when we buy a company, it was the people like me that started it out, wanted to retire, so we would keep all the, their employees, you know, and, and uh, it grew from there. I, the, you know, the thing is, I look back now, and it's like, you know, we've grown exponentially, obviously. We actually ended up buying Black Hat back out because the third generation was getting older and the fourth generation of uh, Lian Fang wasn't that concerned about Black Hat. So they, they still own the, the label, but we own the marketing to it. But you know, when I first started the, whole, the wholesale business, my father was a stockbroker, reconnaissance pilot in World War II, just you know, shot down, very good businessman, self-taught. Self he said, you know, let me explain something to you. When you do a deal, he was talking about mo most of the wholesale business. Before you shake a guy's hand, you go to the other side of the table and imagine you know, that you're that guy. If it's not a good deal for him, then don't do the deal. Because if it's not a good deal for both of you, the deal's not gonna last. So today, we're selling the grandsons of some of the guys that I first sold when we had the 4,000 square foot warehouse. You know. I mean, there, there were some tough years money-wise, you know, growing and trying to keep up with all these guys that had much bigger credit lines than I did and all that. But I'm not nearly as proud of the money that I've made as I am of the, the uh, lives that I've impacted positively. If you want to see what fireworks is about, come in one of my stores and watch these 12 or 14 year old kids hand in hand with their mom or dad, eyes as big as half dollars, excited about all the product. But we're not just selling fireworks, we're selling the experience of buying fireworks. The whole strategy has always been take care of your customer, whether it's retail or wholesale, take care of your employees, 
My daughter Lauren was asked a question just a few months ago about what's going to happen when your dad and uncle are get older. What happens if something happens to them tomorrow? And, and she said something which also shows the mentality of Winco. She said, well, we would get through it. Just like anything that we've ever done, you know, but whatever, whatever they throw at us, we'll get through it, you know. So I've, I've been lucky enough to have a tremendous amount of people that have helped support this business, have built this business. That's probably the biggest asset we have is our people that work with us.